may not be the microscope you have, but most of the parts are going to be the same. So first we have an on-off switch, like any other on-off switch. Controls the power, but there's also this, this rheostat or dimmer switch here. We can control the light intensity. That's very important as you change from objective to objective. So you'll see how it turned all the way off, and I'll crank it up to where it's the brightest. I did it on purpose, just the good, better for the light bulb if when you start it, it's, it's uh, down to one or zero. Okay, so those are the two ways you can control the light intensity from a, just a general power standpoint. Other structures you'll have a harder time seeing here in this video, but there's a, I'm using a little teeny metal handle here that I call the iris diaphragm, and hopefully you'll notice that as I go to the left, more light's coming through the condenser here. As I close it down, less light, looking at my finger, is going through the condenser here. So that's another way to control light intensity. This microscope also has this ribbed portion here on the bottom where I can control the light right at the bulb, but I rarely ever have to use that. So that's kind of the, the art of using a microscope is knowing how to fiddle with light, light intensity to see what you need to see. So generally speaking, I, I recommend using just as much light as you need. So too much light can lead to eye strain and headaches. So especially when you're first getting used to using microscopes, I actually like them pretty bright. But if you don't, just use just enough light to get the job done. All right, other major features of the microscope. So we have to, so that's how you can control the light that goes through your specimen. Well, how do we control where the specimen goes? So here we have the stage. So this black portion here is the stage and, the, and there's also your, your slide will go right there and it's held in place. So you actually wanna put the slide all the way in and then use these knobs here that you can see at the bottom to move the stage forward and backwards and right and left. So you actually will put the slide all the way inside this bracket and then move it to the light source. A lot of times students will try to put the, light, uh, the, the slide where the light is and that can be a big problem. So it just won't work very well. So this is how you can control the stage forward and backward, side to side. But the most important knobs on here would actually be down here. Let me turn this a little bit. So you've got, this looks like one knob, but it's actually two on this microscope. So you have the coarse adjustment knob. And notice as I turn this larger portion on the inside, the stage moves up and down a lot. On the outside, you have the fine adjustment knob. And it's moving, but it's barely moving. So as I really get it spinning, you can see a little bit of movement there. So the coarse adjustment knob is what I use to get into the right ballpark. But to actually focus your specimen, you need the fine adjustment knob. So generally speaking, I only use the, uh, we'll get through the objectives here in a second, but I only use the coarse knob for the first two objectives. So, so that's how you can control the light intensity and how you can move your slide. Now let's go up a little bit higher and take a look at the objectives. So here, this is a binocular parfocal compound light microscope. So it's binocular because it has two eyepieces up here. Uh, instead of, you know, traditionally microscopes only had one. I personally still only use one, so it's, it's up to you. It's called a binocular parfocal microscope because these objectives here, so here we have the scanning power. Let me turn it towards you a little bit. The scanning power 4X objective. Here we have the yellow uh, low power 10X objective. Here we have the blue 40X objective called high dry power. Highest power we can use without immersion oil, which is why it's called high dry power. And here we have the white, oh, we actually don't have an oil immersion objective on here. So uh, as you can see, it's, it's been removed, but the oil immersion objective would be, would be 100X. Sorry about that. I grabbed this slide or this microscope out of a different cabinet and it didn't have the oil immersion objective. So, but you get the idea. Uh, so those are your objectives. This is a parfocal microscope because these objectives are all linked together. So what that basically means is the better job you do early of focusing your specimen, the easier it is later on. So these objectives are linked together in a way where if I get it perfectly focused on the lower objectives, as I go to the higher objectives, I should either not have to move the fine adjustment knob at all or just a little tweak. So if I do it right, I can get a bacteria, let's say, all the way up to oil immersion. And as I go from the blue high dry power to the white oil immersion power, sometimes I never have to touch the fine adjustment knob, but if I do, it should only be to move it a millimeter or two in each either direction. So that's what it means to be a parfocal microscope. So a binocular parfocal compound light microscope. So traditionally simple microscopes or early microscopes had a single lens or even a glass ball that they would use. So like, uh, like Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek would have used a, a glass ball as his lens system, but he could see things at somewhere in the neighborhood of 270x magnification. Pretty awesome for the seven, uh, 1600s, but uh, 
Uh, so a compound microscope has a multiple lens system. And that's not these different objective lenses here. We're actually using multiple lenses at the same time. So let's say we switch it here to this low power, the 10x objective. So you have, a, you have an objective there. And there's a second lens system up in the ocular. So I don't know how well you can see it, but this says 10x right here. So you actually, if you're figuring out the total magnification, you take your objective, which in this case was 10x, and multiply it by the 10x here in the ocular. So, uh, you could, so some oculars get 20x or 25x. So technically, there are microscopes like this that can get to 2500x. But uh, generally speaking, most microscopes try to shoot for that 1000x uh, area. Now, so it's called a binocular parfocal compound light microscope. So I think the, the light part is easy enough to understand. It's the energy source here is a, is a beam of visible light. So it's just a normal little light bulb in there. Other, there are, there are microscopes that use photons and lasers and obviously the electron microscopes. Those, uh, those, are, those are the best in my opinion. There are microscopes that can see things with better resolution than uh, electron microscopes, but I just love them. I always say if I won the lottery, the first thing I would buy is a scanning electron micrograph, but or microscope, sorry. But they use beams of electrons. So the uh, with the beam of electrons has a much shorter wavelength, which is actually why you can get a hundred thousand or more times magnification from certain electron microscopes. So, but I'll cover that. I'll cover resolution and what it means as far with magnification in another video. I just wanted to cover the basic anatomy here of a microscope. We've, I've created multiple videos where I show you how to use them and what to look for inside the microscope, but I just wanted to make sure that you got to see the outside once. All right, everybody have a wonderful day.